Hey, it's Jeremy with Teleton. We wanted to do a quick video where we talk about how we made the drum kits for Tempo. Um, I live in Nashville, which is actually a great place to be from if you are trying to get a hold of some vintage drums. And when we started, I basically went to every drum shop that I could find and asked them to see what, what they call their orphaned drums, which are uh, drums that like it could be a kick or a tom or something that doesn't have the rest of the kit with it. it. It's just a tom by itself or just a kick by itself. Those are usually a little bit harder to sell because, um, you know, especially Nashville, you're, you got touring bands, you know, buying stuff. They don't want a kit where every drum shell looks completely different, but you guys don't have to look at these drums. You just uh, are going to hear them. So we basically bought out a ton of these orphan vintage uh, vintage drums, mostly from the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s. And we started basically just using our ear to put kits together, to put different toms together, kicks and snares together. We, uh, we tried, we, uh, we did multiple tunings with the different drums. We did different heads. We used different mics in different rooms. Um, it gave us so much flexibility that I feel like we wouldn't normally have if we just went out and tried to get a hold of, say, you know, 10 drum kits where they were all matching and everything. Um, this created so much flexibility and gave us the ability to just do a, get a lot more mileage out of these drums. I have, yeah, a pretty decent collection of my own of drums that we also put into the, the collection. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, let's just start listening to some of these kits. All right, when you load up Tempo, it's gonna load with uh, a beat and kit already selected. This kit is uh, heavy set. And most of this video, I'm gonna be playing in manual mode. And as I've mentioned in other videos, I am a pretty terrible finger drummer, which is unfortunate because I'm supposed to be like, you know, decent at keyboards. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna be playing manually and you'll have to, to bear with me. Uh, so the heavy set kit, um, uh, as you would guess from the name, is like some thicker, fatter sounds. A lot of these uh, first kits are. Um, this uses like a, a Ludwig uh, 60s Ringo Silver Sparkle kick drum. Um, I believe, yeah, we use the uh, Pearl Ultracast on this one. Let's just listen to it for a second. So that's heavy set. Heavy set. Uh, let's hear a couple others kind of just playing a similar thing. Sticky tack. These are uh, very short, fat samples. Close talker. I use this one quite a bit. I think this is one where we had the my uh, Ludwig Duco kit that has the yeah. This one has the head off, so it's a just kind of a punchy kick. Uh, I might as well mention now that we tracked everything with multiple round robins and velocity layers, so you'll hear uh, the drums respond in that way. Uh, uptight, I think this one uses, uh, yeah, the DW. We, we don't have a lot of modern uh, snare drums uh, that we used, but there are a couple. This DW, then there is a Roberts snare uh, that also uh, is new that, uh, that we used. Um, so this is like a piccolo snare. I really like this one. Uh, this one sounds pretty cool when you turn up the distress and decade down. We'll just set everything back to uh, where it was as we demonstrate. Let's skip ahead a little bit. There's a kit that I wanted to talk about. We had this idea, we wanted to mic uh, a whole kit using just iPhones. And there's actually two iPhone kits in Tempo. Uh, the only difference between them is the snare. We, we did this with two different snares, but uh, here is the first iPhone kit. Again, uh, recorded with only iPhones. And the other one with the different snare sounds like this.
one of these uses a, this one uses a 60s Slingerland, uh, the Niles badge era, and then the other one, whoops, uh, the other one used the Roberts uh, snare drum, the other modern one I was just referring to. Um, so most of these ones towards the, the top of the list of these kits are more shorter and punchier. And then as you go down, some of the more ringy, uh, more open kits are, as you go down a little further, this club kit has, uh, I believe this has a ringy kick and snare. Maybe a little ringy. And with any of these kick drums, uh, you might want to leave it ringy and you might want to uh, tighten it up, which you can do right here. Fatten it up a little bit. And if at any point you feel like using this tight knob on a kick or snare sounds a little bit artificial, you can add a little bit of room to kind of compensate or uh, or like a, a just a little bit of plate reverb. And that will basically kind of cover for any artificial uh, cutting off of the note. Let's see. Uh, socially distant. This one's like a little bit more of a roomy sounding kit. It uses the room mics more. Let's hear just a few more. Oh, uh, mid stress. I like this one. It has a warm mid range tone to it. I really like that snare. Great, it's a really great like hip hop snare. It's great, very snappy. This is another one, Auto Magic Vibe. I use this one a lot. I think this one also uses the kick with the head off. Uh, I'll turn that Titan back down. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, Let's pick a beat real quick. Step away from uh, manual mode. Uh, soft touch, let's hear this one. Um, you can trigger these beats by playing middle C. And so I wanted to mention that uh, you can pick a beat and then hear it on all the different kits. It's our nasty kit called Distressed. And whatever you do to the effects, it's gonna hold uh, even while you're switching kits. And then you can also sub out uh, while you play, while you're browsing kits, you can also just be switching out, you know, your kick or snare. Or same with the snare. So anyway, there's, that makes it really easy to kind of listen as you browse. And I want to mention one more time that the beat is what will carry all the effects and kit information with it. Um, so 
you know, if we had fattened up or added clarity to something that's going to translate as you switch out the kit. Um, if you at any point want to, you know, reset the effects or the drum details, you can use your uh, utility menu here um, to reset either the sound design, which are the controls here at the top, uh, current drum details or all drum details. That's going to have to do with um, restoring these back to their defaults. Um, so you can do that using your utility menu if you just want kind of to hear everything raw, like without any effects or anything, you know, manipulated. All right, let's spend a few minutes just kind of listening to some individual kick drums. Uh, here's a 50s lead in Lug Ludwig. This is our iPhone uh, kick. Uh, here's the that same lead in Ludwig with no head. Here's the same lead in Ludwig, but using uh, a pillow inside. I'm gonna turn this fattened down. Uh, that same kick ran through a plate reverb. Here's a little different uh, tuning that we did. This one leaves it a little bit ringy. Let's go to the 60s Duco kick. This is dead. More of those nasty samples. I, I believe the kit is called Distressed that we put all of those super distorted samples in. Uh, here's the Duco with no head. Uh, 60s Duco with the front head, but open. make that into a really monster sounding kick. Uh, here's with the pillow uh, to muffle it, but using more of the room mics. Uh, here's the one we ran through tape. Uh, and the tuning is wide open. This is basically uh, with no processing. Let's hear this Slingerland. I like this, the one with no head. Which I know I keep coming back to that. I tend to use the ones with no head, but uh, that's just a, a personal preference. So that's kind of a quick run through of our, our kick drums that we used. Um, feel free to mix and match any of these that you want. Uh, let's move on to the snare. Uh, here's the DW. This is, like I said, one of the only modern snare drums that we used. And I'm going to turn these back to neutral, basically. So Gretsch Catalina, this has a lot of bite to it. Same Gretsch Catalina, but more with the room mics. Um, I had a few different marching snare drums that we have close mic'd and with some of the more room mics. Uh, this Pearl Ultracast is, I've had this snare for about 20 years. It's not like my coolest looking snare, but it actually sounds really great. It, it already starts off pretty dead and fat, and you can obviously use the fatten knob to increase that even more. Great sounding snare drum. Uh, same snare, but more uh, focused on uh, the bottom head. Some room mics on that one. Um, let's hear this Roberts. Same Roberts, but mic'd with iPhones. Ran through a plate reverb. Uh, focus on the room mics uh, through two inch tape. Uh, here's a Rogers snare from the 60s. Uh, these Selinger ones are a little more ringy. These are kind of fun. I believe this one is like the Niles era.
Uh, another iPhone one. This is that same Slingerland, but mic'd uh, with iPhones. Now there's Slingerland, uh, this 70s one's kind of cool. And again, you can tighten this up if you wanted to. This one's, this one's really uh, tuned really tightly. It's another marching snare, an older Ludwig. Yeah, that's my WMFL snare that I was talking about in the intro that I found at a flea market. It's a Yamaha Custom that we processed a few different ways. This one has a little bit of sizzle and saturation on it. Let's go ahead and run through the hi-hats real quick. Uh, here's some we recorded with tube mics. Some really distorted ones. Uh, the tape samples. Uh, more with the tube mics, but on the Piesky. I think I ended up really liking the tube mics on the, the hi-hats because we were looking for something that just like really cuts. has like a thick, aggressive sound on, on a lot of these. This is more natural, uh, K14 inch. Some of the room mics. Some darker tape samples. Here's our uh, iPhone samples. This one through, goes through a spring reverb. Some really thin hi-hats. So yeah, more more tube mics. Um, I believe uh, what were we using uh, Neumann M one forty nines in this, which has a lot of bite to it. That's kind of a brief run through of the hi hats. We haven't even talked about the toms yet. Um, you can switch out any uh, element of any one of these kits with a different one uh, using this browser menu. And uh, let's hear a couple more of these. Nasty kit. This one uses ribbon mics. Actually, uh, an old RCA on that one. This one's a little more ringy. And uses room mics. Let's hear some of these high toms. This is kind of what we we're talking about when, we, when he said that you can, by utilizing all orphan drums, uh, you can kind of mix and match any way you want. You might find some combinations that we weren't thinking of that you might like. You can just listen to a few of these rides too. It's a Piesty 20 inch that we process different ways. I really love all these uh, tape samples, the super dark ones. Any of the ones where we use the tube mics, those are gonna be like a more aggressive sound. They, they really cut through. Let me hear that iPhone one. Uh, here's the iPhone ride. It's 
really dark sounding. So a few options there. Crashes, no one really wants to just listen to me play crashes, but we have an iPhone version of that too. We'll take a peek at the percussion just briefly. Uh, these are all actually just one shots. So these were not recorded with the velocity layers and round robins. And the menu is gonna be the same for one, two, and three. Uh, the reason there's three of them is because in the beat maker, you may want more than one. Like this one's tambourine and sometimes there's a, you may want two lanes, one for the high bongo, one for the low bongo. So that's what those three lanes are for. So here's a tambourine. Um, we did record this with a forward and back motion. So as it's not gonna sound the greatest with me repeatedly playing it, like finger playing, but like uh, in the beat maker, you, you'll be able to hear the back and forth motion as this is repeated. Kind of nice. Some different claps processed differently. This one's a slower clap. Uh, Maraca, same thing as the tambourine. There's like a forward and backward motion. There's a few variations on the rim hits. There's a single and a double. And then some snaps. And like I said, this will be the same for all three percussion lanes. There is one more thing that I just wanna say briefly before we wrap up here. And that is that these are not your typical, like your your rock, alternative rock drums or, or whatever. These are, almost all, you know, pre-1970 drums recorded through a vintage signal chain. Um, we recorded these, a lot of them at the same place we recorded Golden Age Grand. They had that really great vintage uh, sphere console. Um, they had some really great vintage preamps that we used and, and microphones. These are made to have a warm vintage sound. They're made for making grooves and we're really proud of it. We're really happy with it. And um, I hope you get a chance to check it out. Do watch the other videos that we have available. Um, we have a video showing how you make a beat from scratch and uh, a walkthrough video where we kind of show you what everything on Tempo does. But we did want to spend a little bit of time just kind of explaining how we put these kits together, how we were able to get so you know many sounds out of these drums, and uh, also just let you hear a little bit more of the kits since we didn't explore that quite as much with some of the other videos. So I hope this was uh, helpful.